Welcome to this week's episode of The Cardinal Cast. Hello and welcome everyone. I am Lonnie Watson, by myself, no Jerry Mac to be found. I am only on Facebook right now, no Instagram, and I very barely um, got my audio set up. So I am on the struggle bus so far for this Cardinal Cast Live. So welcome, join me. I don't have any notes in front of me on what I'm going to talk about. I know I'm going to talk about scheduling a little bit. Um, that is a for certain today, but thank you guys for joining me. It's been one of those days where my office door has been open, shut, open, shut, open, shut, and I didn't get a chance to uh, write down notes or to even promote what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, so yeah, let's do it. Let's go. I know I'm going to talk about scheduling. I got scheduling on my brain. I got students asking me about scheduling, when we're going to schedule, when are we going to start to schedule, what classes can I take next year? So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, I'm also a little worried about my YouTube video and quality, but yeah, what the heck. Let's roll with it. Let's roll with it. I'm really hoping. This is what I'm really hoping does not happen. If you guys, this is really funny. If you guys go back on the, the YouTube to one of our, it was our second episode ever. It looks like this. There's no audio, none, and I think Jerry titled it Modeling Failure because we failed miserably. So I'm really hoping that there's some audio to this one, um, and then I got it set up. We were gone last week. We were in training. Um, Mr. Max in training again today. We are so trained up. Just ask us. Um, I will let you know what I'm an expert in, uh, which is actually very little. So I want to talk a little bit about scheduling today. Before I talk about scheduling, I want to highlight a few things that I sent out in the Five Bullet Friday this week. I think they are valuable. I think they are worth knowing. Um, and there's one video clip in there that I really want to make sure everyone gets a chance to watch. And I'm going to be really specific about the minute I want you to watch. Because um, it's a long video and we might not have time for all of it. So, Lonnie Watson, high school counselor. I help make the master schedule for the high school, you guys. I am in the process of collecting data from teachers. So that's where I'm at right now. So I just wanted to share with you on a day that I'm by myself uh, a little bit of what that looks like on my end and what it looks like for students um, and what kind of classes we might be offering next year if there are any changes. So right now... I'm in the phase in scheduling where I'm having the departments decide what the heck I want to push out to kids. So I'm the one who gets to collect the data on what kids want to take. Um, I am the one who gets to give kids options for classes. Um, I'm the one who gets to talk about, hey, how does that class pair with something you might be interested in in the future? So I get to have really awesome conversations with kids. It is one of my favorite parts, but I do feel like there needs to be like 10 of me <laughs> for this part of my job. Um, so right now the departments are collecting data within um, their classes, within what they teach, within their state, with this, their state departments and their state associations on what what kind of offerings are needed? What offerings, uh, what do they need to be successful at the ne next level in college? What if they want to go to a tech school? What if they want to go to a community college? What if they want to go to work? What kind of classes are, are we offering? What kind of, within their departments are valuable for kids to know? So at this point, um, the, the departments are doing the big legwork. Um, obviously, I, I'm not an expert in a lot of different areas. I only ever taught math and I've been out of the classroom for quite some years now. So I'm not the expert on what kids need to know in math anymore. So that's where the departments, the department chairs and their team meetings come into play on what is needed, what kids need to know, what's going to make them successful in a wide variety and array of areas, um, what electives we offer, what the core standards require. So they're deciding that they will bring all that information back to me and I will pump those classes out to kids. And if you've been watching my Five Bullet Fridays emails, they come out on Friday. Um, 
And I highlighted one of our new course offerings already in an email. And that course is called History Through Film. And hopefully you open that email. I don't know that a lot did. I get some data on those MailChimps. And so last week's was a little bit down on how many opens we had. But that's all right. I'll be blessed for the ones I get. Um, and in that email, I highlighted uh, the syllabus and instructional modes for a new class called History Through Film. And it, Mr. Sandstrom's going to teach it, and it looks very fun. So if you get a chance, check that out. I think for the next few weeks, I'm going to highlight a new class or a class. Sometimes we have classes that aren't necessarily new, but they rotate. So for example, next week I'm going to highlight Vet Science as one of my courses. And Vet Science has been offered before at Shattern High School, but it's an every other year rotation. So we don't offer it every year. So kids, and this is similar to what a kid would experience at the college rotation, um, you've got to be selective in your scheduling to make sure you can get that to fit in. And hopefully it does for those kids who want to take it. So I'm going to highlight that next week. Very cool class to be able to take. Um, it's an agriculture-based class. Um, kids take like this year companion animals would be an offering and next year vet science is a 90-minute offering. So they get a lot more in-depth, um, really good hands-on practical stuff. So that's in my five bullet Friday and that's just where we're at in the process. I mean, heck, I don't know anything about vet science. Are you kidding me? I was a math teacher and I'm a school counselor. But those departments get together and they meet. And sometimes they include Mr. Mack. And sometimes they include uh, Miss Moore, our curriculum director. And sometimes they include myself. Um, and they decide, well, what's, what's needed in our areas? Um, where are kids finding jobs? Where are kids being successful in college? Where are we not being successful? Um, and we've got good relationships. Luckily, a college right next door to tell us some of those things good relationships with our other state organizations and state colleges as well, as well as some private ones too. Um, in fact, this is, I'm getting way off tangent. Go figure. My name is Lonnie. I get off tangent. Um, we actually every year bring in a panel of past graduates and they help us actually decide what's needed as well because they're in the trenches at college right now. So we just did that um, before our, we left for holiday for Christmas break, and they gave us really valuable information. They weren't all first-year college students. They ranged from first to fourth year, and they give us and our teachers and departments valuable information that helps guide what classes are needed um, and what we need to bolster up for students to be successful at the next level. And that next, you guys know by now, I have a bleeding heart on this. It does not always mean four-year college. It does not. We've got to get rid of the idea that anything is, that there's one path, path to success, because there's not. Um, in fact, I'm encouraging kids more and more to go on an experience like a rotary exchange after high school, do AmeriCorps for a year where you travel and work and get paid and get scholarships and get to learn about what you like to do. I, I'm way off tangent, but it's kind of like, for whatever reason, it drives me a little bit crazy with careers. We are so narrow in what we think when and what path a kid needs to take at this point, when really finding a career is a lot like finding a spouse later in life. To find a spouse, we let kids date, right? And we let ourselves date. We didn't say, oh, I want a spouse that makes me this much amount of money and lets me live in this location, and therefore I choose that degree right? Like we dated a little bit. We went on a date. We met people we really liked. We met people that were awesome people, just maybe not didn't want to live with, right? So I think a little bit about this class exploration, career exploration, and college degree choosing as dating, right? Let's let our students date different courses. Let's let them try something that they might fail at. Heaven forbid we fail, right? We do. We fail all the time. We do every day. I was in tears last week for a couple mistakes I made. Um, still making them every day. Wish I wasn't. Beat myself up when I do, but I do. And um, if you haven't got a chance to, Mr. Mack and I had a really honest conversation on this podcast. It was one of our first one, ones about taking hard classes. Um, 
And we talked about like hard things will come in life. Let's do it now together while we have lots of support. Um, and that could be anything. Like what's hard for me might not be hard for another student or what's hard for one student might be easy for another. So it could be hard, could be challenging yourself by stepping out of a box and taking, you know, an art class. And hard for some might be taking trig and hard for others might be that English class that's really a push for them. Um, so it's okay to try classes that we don't do well in. It's okay. There's no one path to success. Uh, so scheduling. Back to what it looks like on my end. So once the departments get together in February, Mr. Pow Pow and I will do what we call a rollover, where we move the year over in our computer system that allows students to make schedule requests. Once they make schedule requests, we'll probably do that in bigger groups, right? We'll talk a little bit about graduation requirements. Uh, we'll do all those things. We'll do those in bigger groups, and we'll request because it's not it's not an actual schedule, and it's not official yet. It is just requesting. So just to give us an idea of how many numbers, how many sections of each class we need. For example, um, I used egg before. Let's you know, let's use woods and welding. Um, there are some years where we have like three woods class offerings and there's some years where we might have three welding class offerings depending on what the students wanted at that time and place or that place and time. So we'll get that data from the kids in big groups. I'll call them probably to the computer lab or to the auditorium and I'll get that data. I'll collect that data. I'll share that data with the departments in case they need to make some changes to who teaches what and where and then we'll build the master schedule. Once we build the master schedule, that's all like my least favorite part, to be honest, because it's hard. It's I'm thankful I have a math degree because it's really like a puzzle. Um, I will then pull students individually to come sit down with me and we will make their schedules. So we will do the best we can to make a big master schedule that fits as many needs as possible. Um, last year, knock on wood, we got 90% of all requests satisfied. So and that's a really, really good schedule. Um, our schedule I would, I would say, and I'm being brave by saying this, someone could put me in my place, another school counselor, an admin who builds schedules for a different district. I would, I almost guarantee our schedule is one of the most complicated in the state to make. And I'm going to say that only because a schedule gets really complicated when you have very unique offerings. And at Shadron High School, you guys, we have such unique offerings. An example of this is we are the only school in the state of Nebraska that Shadron State allows us to teach dual credit math offerings. The only state or the only school in the state. Um, basically, they pulled it from everyone else and they said, we know what you're doing at Shadron. We know your teachers and we know your quality and we stand by that. So that makes our schedule unique because those are singleton classes. Just AP Calc is one place and Pre-Calc is one place. Um, the other thing, like I said, our ag offerings and what we offer there is totally unique. Um, our AP offerings for the size of the school we have um, is outlandish. Our basic nursing, we get kids certified CNAs by the time they leave our building if they want it. Those are all unique offerings through WNCC and they can only happen at very specific places. So our schedule is complicated but we build the best one we can with the request and then the magic happens where I get to sit down with every student and build an actual schedule and that's the fun part for me because that's when we really tie in um, what I'm thinking. You know like I want to pair these because it interests me for this. Then that's when we make learning uh, meaningful in the classroom and we're not just in boring classes. Uh, by the time you're a junior, senior, if you've had good standing and got through all your requirements, we really pump requirements the freshman, sophomore year. You don't even, you can be part timers at Shattern High School. You can go take classes at the state college, at Shattern State. You can take them online. Um, you really have a ton of flexibility in your scheduling. So that's really fun. Uh, so for students who are like, gosh, you know, we just don't have a lot of the department or the classes that interest me, but the college does. So I'm just going to go over there and take a bunch of classes and I'll help those kids get signed up for those too. Um, they're really, really fun conversations to have with kids. So that's when, that's what the kids get excited for. They're like, this larger group requesting, it's important, we get it, 
we want to be as valid as possible and as accurate as possible. We get it. But the fun stuff and the thing they look forward to is that conversation where we sit down, where we pair ideas of like, is what do I want to do? And how can I make this schedule meaningful for me and what I want to do? And maybe I don't know. Maybe I need to date around. I need to try different classes and explore, do some job shadowing, um, all good stuff. So really, really fun, um, really worthwhile, all good things um, in the scheduling process. It just, we, we, it's a big elephant. In my philosophy, I say this all the time, we eat, how do you eat a big elephant? You just one bite at a time. So right now, the bite we're taking at Chattern High School is for the teachers to meet in their departments, uh, get their thoughts together, and um, propose some new classes if they have new classes or revamp the classes they're already teaching. Um, so that's, that's the step we're on. Like I said, I will continue to highlight those new offerings as they come into me. Right now, the only new offering that I know for sure is the one, and I've got one next week, like I said, the ag one to highlight as well, is that history through film should be really, really fun. Um, you know, I feel like with scheduling, and last year I was just thinking about that number 90%. We hit our master schedule with, and I get all the data from our computer system, 90% requests were met. It always feels like this. Let's say you've got, we've got four period days if they're 90 minutes. Oh man, seven of those classes, bomb.com. I wanted all of those. I have to have them. I need them. I'm getting dual credit, whatever it is. There's always that one class. It's like, gosh, I didn't pick any of the offerings here in this, this block schedule. But what's funny is I find that once the kids get into that, I'm, for an example, I might be accounting, you know, they might say, oh, there's a PE class, there's accounting, and there's um, these science classes, but I already had my science and I'm not going into science, I guess maybe I'll try a business class. You'd be surprised how many kids who were, felt forced into an offering because they didn't like what was there end up loving or joining FBLA or doing something down the road, something they didn't foresee enjoying. So um, I take that with a grain of salt on like, we can do well, we're not going to be perfect. There's no perfect schedule. Um, but we do pretty well. And we'll continue to do well because we have great departments, great teachers who uh, just make good offerings for kids. If any parent wants to be part of that one on one meeting, you just Call me, email me, come on in. Uh, love to have you. So if you have input, it's a fine balance for me um, on we want self-driven children, right? We want children who feel like they have um, some authority in their lives. I mean, this is important. It's what they take. It's what they're going to do. So we, we're really good about making that meeting um, a balanced meeting where we give the student voice and choice, right? Voice and choice is super important when you're when you're a teenager. So um I'm always going to be the one that that uh, wants the kids to do their best. They wants to push. I, you've got to know me. There is no reason why any student in their right mind should beat themselves up and have anxiety and depression over ha having a 4.0. I just don't. I don't believe it in my bones. I think that was old mentality. And the reason I say that is because I am. I'm a data girl. I'm a math nerd, data validity girl, and there's no scholarships for a 4.0. So it used to be back when I was going to school, we were trying to save ourselves from getting B's or C's or whatever it is uh, because of that GPA. Uh, starting next year, and, and I think we'll talk about this more next week with Mr. Mack here. I want to have a good discussion about this. There will, new, no, there will be no class rank. We will not at Shattern High School, I like, oh, I'm so excited to say, we will no longer at Shattern High School rank or pit students against each other. We just won't do it. We don't believe in it. We don't see the validity to it. Unless you're running the same race, do not judge me on a 200 meter if you get to run a 100 meter dash, right? And it's causing our students anxiety. It's not needed. Um, we're getting rid of it. We will no longer pit students against each other and rake students at Shattern High School. Oh bless it. I've been preaching it for years. It's finally, it's one of those things we had to put a plan in place to phase it out. And it's finally going to be phased out next year. Um, so, cause back in the day we would try to take easier classes to avoid some of that. Um, 
And then what happened is the colleges really moved towards, they, they could see that. They could not tell the difference between a student with a 4.0 who really had high academic skills and a student who had a 4.0 who hadn't taken the right classes to be prepped at the collegiate level. They couldn't tell. So then they put all this weight on the ACT. Overweight. Now we're stressed about that on the ACT. So that's where they moved. Um, and the only way to get the ACT score you want or the best of your ability, the ACT score to the best of your ability is to challenge yourself and take hard classes. And sometimes that takes you a hit in the GPA. So what scholarships have done is they have recognized that that's happening and they've pulled away from that 4.0 being valid or valuable. Um, so it's interesting, and I feel like it's always a spectrum, right? Colleges move way towards the ACT, so now we're pump and taking is you know as challenging as to your abilities that you can take um, and take that ACT lots of times, guys, lots of times. But now I actually sense a shift. I feel it coming that I think colleges are moving away from the weight of that ACT and that exam entrance score, and they're starting to look at the whole person. So, right, they were looking at class rank and ACT, and now we're starting to, because schools are getting smart, and we're like, we're not going to let you look at that anymore, because it's not valid. I'm not comparing a kid who's running a 400 meter to a 200. It's it, There's no validity to it. Um, and that's not, we don't want to promote the idea at Shattern High School of being perfect but being fragile, right? Because we want to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes, and uh like I said, date around and try different classes and, and see what works. Now, if any student's watching this, I'm not telling you to go get a boyfriend or girlfriend. That's not right. High school, nope, don't need that. Just be friends, right? I'm getting off, off topic again. But um, my point of the matter is all this, I got down a rabbit hole on there's no one path to success. And that's why scheduling is so fun because everybody's looks so unique based on their skills, their abilities, and their interests. And so that's what we try to do, and I think we do really well at Shattern High School because we have so many cool offerings. I mean, it would be one of the things that would keep me in this town forever is that my kid would get that many opportunities in that vast array of things. I tell you what, there are not many other schools that have as many opportunities um, that Shattern High kids get for as, as far as class select selection for the size we are. So, and activities too, I could go down a whole different rabbit hole. So that's super exciting for me personally as a school counselor and me personally as a parent of a student of a cardinal. So um, that is scheduling. The other thing I wanted to talk about, I want to give a quick recap of a the few of the five Bullet Friday items. First, I talked about the Kiwanis program. The Kiwanis program will be coming up in the spring. It will be a chance for every student who has a certain grade point average cumulatively, meaning um, that they've collected it over time, that it is, it is an average of all their terms, um, that they will get honored. It is something that usually happens in the middle of the day. It is not something they have to apply for. It is just... Um, they will get pulled kind of like the honor roll gets pulled through data as well. So there will be an opportunity for that. If a student is below that 3.5 GPA, I just wanted to pump out to the world and have them see that they can still get honored in that program um, if they get gold honor roll for quarter three. So quarter three is important. It's another, if, if an honor is important to you, then um, by all means, I just want to make sure everyone knows the parameter for that award ceremony. Um, it's fun to go to. It's in the middle of the day, so it's hard to parents to get to sometimes because you got to sneak out of work, but the kids dress up really nice. I like to see them. And that is not run by the high school. That is an outside Kiwanis organization that comes in and puts the whole thing on. So um, there's very little that I do or, or Mr. Mack or that the school does. We, we try to stay out of that a little bit, um, and the Kiwanis program puts that on. Thing two, highlighted that history through film course. Check that out. Thing three, if you are a senior or a parent of a senior, get on the Google Drive. There are so many scholarships this year. It's overwhelming how many scholarships a senior could fill out. It is like full-time job. There's no way they could fill them all out, but a scholarship a week, 
I, you know what? I coach seniors up just like anything else. It's like working out. If you don't have a system for when you're going to do it every day or three days a week and what times you're not going to do it, right? Or you're not going to do it with fidelity or you're not going to do it consistently. Filling out scholarships is the same as working out. It ain't always fun. It's not that fun. Okay, so if it's something's not that fun, but it's good for you, you better put a system in place so you make that a habit that you do your senior year. So I always encourage them, like, maybe it's maybe it's Sundays at this time. Maybe it's in the morning where you wake up an hour early one day a week or two days a week. But you have a system for when you do that because it takes time and energy and you won't have enough time in the school day in classes when you're learning to work on scholarships. I know Mr. Nobling and Mr. Ewing are gracious with their time, but they are government and English teachers. They need to teach government and they need to teach English. They give copious amounts of time for scholarship. That is a blessing, but it can't, it's just not enough. Okay, it's not enough. It needs to be a habit that you put in and a system for when you fill those out. The last thing I really wanted to touch on is my last bullet, um, for the Five Bullet Friday email was on social media again. It was on Digital Predators. Uh, Mel Robbins has done, it's a two-part series so far. I encourage you to listen either on iTunes, watch it on YouTube. She has her own talk show. Um, or watch it straight from the link in the Cardinal Cast. But she talks about Digital Predators. And any parents listening, I'm, it just, I'm seeing it still. We're seeing sexting. We're seeing nudes. We confiscated a phone this last week. Not us personally. The cops did of a student who was blackmailing another student. Uh, it is still a huge issue. I am hearing from, from students that they are pestering for the, their moms for phones at fourth and fifth grade. Um, that it is just getting un, a burden to say no to social media that young. Scroll to about 30 minutes in that video and listen to these experts. And you should probably watch the whole thing. It's very, I'll, I'll admit I cried. It's very hard to listen to. Um, however, it it's happening and our students are exposed to this world and we need to know. If you scroll to about the 30 minute mark and watch her expert that comes in and talks, they talk about a law, legislation called COPA. And COPA says in law that students are not to have social media before the age of 13. That's why Facebook prompts when you try to create an account. That's why Facebook prompts on there and says, are you 13? Okay? If you're not, you're not supposed to have it. And I would argue that at 13 and 14 and some of these ages, that they, it's just not, it's not helping. Okay? It's not helping. Now, you're going to get to a point where they're going to want to have it and, and you're going to want them to have it or you want them to start their digital footprint, all those things. And then we're going to live lives alongside with them because we know they have Finsta accounts. We know their Snapchat is the devil because they're streaking, not streaking, streaking, but sending streaks every day. Um, a streak is a continued message back and forth that just gets silly. And if you want to talk more about this, I give presentations around the state of Nebraska. Um, I've actually got a proposal in. I'm hoping to be able to speak at the American School Counselors Association in Seattle this year on snaps, sex, and social media. That video was good. Mel Robbins' series is good because it it highlights, she brings people in who have been through it. And as a school counselor, I'm just sitting here nodding like I deal with this every day. We are not privileged and shattered to not have these predators in our area. It's just not. They're everywhere. So I just want to make sure that um, I got babies too. And as parents and as um, students who support each other and as stakeholders in our building that we are all um, in the know about what is happening. Because so often what happens in my building, I can't talk a lot about because I'm bound by confidentiality and I want to keep confidential for my students. And so sometimes I can't talk about things till 10 years after it happens because um, it might currently be happening. Uh, so, so often I pump these the things I put out are the things I might be dealing with at the moment that I need you to know about. So uh, in that Digital Predator series, the first one is a lot about um, private messaging and how that 
on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and how that's become, you know, can be a real thing. This next one's about some of these self-harm challenges. You've probably all heard of the blue whale challenge. There's a strangling challenge. I mean, this is serious. I remember when there was the fun challenge, like the ice bucket challenge, when we were trying to raise money and, and support, um, for different disabilities, but that's not what these are. So definitely worth a listen, worth a watch. Um, not always easy to, but important that we're knowledgeable. Thanks for listening to my my speech on, I think I'll title this scheduling in the high school, right? That's what I mostly talked about. I went off a lot of tangents. There's no one path for scheduling. There's no one perfect schedule. Um, it, they're all good because they're all individualized at this point. In middle school, we just pump them into the same classes and in elementary school, but now we get to individualize based on needs, wants, abilities, passions. Uh, so all awesome stuff. If any students or parents have questions, email me at lonnie.watson at shatteredschools.net. I am happy to answer them, and I hope you guys have a fabulous day. I sure hope there's some audio to this recording. I have no idea. No idea. We will be back next week on Tuesday, and uh, I will have Jerry Mac with me, hopefully, and uh, we'll pump out another Cardinal cast. So join us. Tag anyone in the comments who you think needs to watch these um, and share it. So uh, I want to make sure that my time outside of my office and not directly with students is, is valuable. So give me feedback, tag people in this, email me, let me know if there are topics you want me to cover more in depth. So awesome. Thank you guys. Take care.